Hey guys, welcome to episode 124. I cannot believe we made it this far. It's been one heck of a road. And with spring looming right now, um, sort of, I hate to say that with the 10 inches of snow we're getting here today, um, but spring is coming. And with that, there are a lot of people who follow this channel that are out boat shopping right now and going to be boat shopping in the next two months. And uh, last week we did a buying your first boat episode. You can check it out right here. I'm getting a lot more questions now. And one of the biggest questions I'm getting is, do I want an inboard boat, inboard engine, or do I want an outboard engine? Facing facts, your budget is gonna have a lot to do with this question. A big budget, larger boat will have an inboard and likely a diesel. A smaller boat, like a starter boat or a lake sailor, is probably going to have an outboard. But what if you're shopping in that middle area, that little bit, say between 22 and 32 feet, where a lot of the boats came with both types of engines? Today we're going to talk about the differences between the two, a uh, pros and cons sort of an episode, and in which situation one engine might be better than the other engine. But first things first, why do the bigger boats all have inboards? What's that all about? And why are they typically diesels? The simple math of it is power. A big boat needs a lot of power. They're very heavy and they have to move efficiently as they displace water moving forward. A big diesel simply makes a lot more torque and a lot more power than any outboard ever could that you would dream up of putting on the back of a sailboat. A big sailboat just will have an inboard for that reason. So before we get started, Lady K Sailing is brought to you by patrons, people who give a couple of bucks an episode to keep this channel improving. And I want to give a special shout out to the two newest members, Matt and BC. Welcome to the team. I've personally had outboard boats and made the switch to an inboard boat. So I can tell you straight away what I loved, absolutely adored about the outboard boats. For starters, outboards are cheaper. The initial purchase price of an outboard sailboat compared to an inboard sailboat is going to be a lot lower. If you had to buy a brand new or used engine for that boat, replacing the outboard is just way cheaper. I have the previous owner's receipts from when he replaced Lady K's inboard diesel and sail drive and it was well over 12 grand. With cheap outboards also comes easy. Changing the spark plugs or the oil or the gear oil on an outboard is so much easier. You can even take it right off the boat entirely to do the work on dry land. Maybe even in a heated or air conditioned garage or basement. Troubleshooting is also easier because you can pull the cowl and you can see every inch of an outboard engine. So you're doing a lot more troubleshooting maintenance sort of inspections, which means you're probably going to have less issues in the long run because it's easier to pay attention to what the motor needs. Most outboards for sailboats are in the sub 15 horse category. So even if they have an electric start option, you can still pull the cord if the batteries are dead. This meant the world to me on my smaller boats. I would sail all day long with the music going and the VHF on, the cell phones charging off of USB ports, knowing I didn't have to worry about my ability to start the engine at the end of the day to get back into the marina was a huge weight off my shoulders. Admit it or not, Knowing a battery bank is getting emptier and emptier as you're sailing is a form of stress. It does bring stress. And when you're sailing, that's the opposite of what you want. Nobody wants stress while they're sailing. So knowing you have that pull cord at the end of the day, even if you're maybe not paying as much attention to the batteries as you should be, will make your day a lot more enjoyable. Another big deal about outboards is most outboards with their setup can steer the boat. And this is huge. If you have a tight marina, and you need to maneuver, you can go full tiller and full outboard in whatever direction you're trying to go. And this, the boat will literally pivot on its keel on its own axis where the people with the inboard boats really have to plan ahead before they start trying to maneuver in a tight space. We sometimes have to make a three point turn, a five point turn, or even a seven point turn forward, back, forward, back, forward, back, just to get the boat to do what we need it to do. We also get the prop wash from the inboard, which means when you back up, most inboard boats will back up to one direction or the other. The outboard won't do that because you can counter it by steering the outboard a little bit. If you're a racer, you'll know that prop drag is a big deal. Inboard people will spend thousands and thousands of dollars on a folding or feathering prop, which basically means the prop blades are able to maneuver in such a way that they reduce their own drag when the engine's not running. On most outboards, however, you can just flip the outboard up right out of the water and forget about it, no drag at all. 
So cheap and easy is definitely the theme with outboards and older two strokes are probably the best example of this. You can pull just about any 80s two stroke out of a barn, do a carb kit, do plugs, gear oil and an impeller and it'll probably start up immediately and it'll probably run all day long. Okay, so outboards are pretty damn good. What's the downside? What don't we like about them? And the biggest one for me um, is sort of its usability. Outboards have a tendency to lift up out of the water, cavitate or lose traction when you're trying to motor back in. Imagine motoring back in with five foot rollers on the stern and the thing just keeps popping up out of the water and losing traction. It revs the crap out of the motor and you lose forward power. It just sucks. It's got to be the worst part about outboards. Outboards can be a huge pain to operate too. Having to reach over the transom but under the stern rail in between the backstay and an upright to hold the stern rail to shift the thing or to steer the thing or to adjust the throttle or pulling the cord often results in a lot of bruises and bumps if the setup and location of the outboard is less than ideal and that's a nightmare. Outboards can get heavy as well on an older boat that was maybe designed for a 40 pound two stroke six horse. You have to replace that, that outboard at some point and you're probably going to end up with a four stroke that's going to weigh twice as much. It's going to ruin the balance of the boat because the boat wasn't designed to have 90 or 100 pounds hanging off the back. When we talk about older two strokes too, they tend to be very noisy and smoky and they smell. Now, I personally love the smell of two stroke smoke, but not all of your passengers will. And as a sailor, a lot of us do tend to care about the environment and two strokes are sort of being phased out slowly over like a 20 year period because they're just dirty. I have two more points on outboards and you know, you can ignore them if they don't matter to you because they're more cosmetic than anything. But an outboard hanging off the back of something so beautiful as a sailboat is an eyesore. They ruin the lines of the boat and they tend to just look obnoxious, especially with the bigger they are. They are also a target for theft. It's very easy to sell a used outboard and no one really asks a lot of questions when buying one. And because they're either just the snip of a padlock away or not locked at all, it's very easy for a thief to scoop your outboard when you're not looking and have it sold on Craigslist before you even realize it's gone. Okay, so that's the thoughts on outboards. When I moved to an inboard boat, it was a huge, dramatic, stressful thing for me. I had a lot of worries because I'd become such an expert with my outboards and maintaining them and keeping them running, I knew nothing of inboards, particularly nothing of diesel engines at all. I went through a whole research and learning process for probably the better part of a year before I went cruising. So inboards, let's start with the good things. An inboard is designed to last much, much longer, particularly the diesel variants. It's not uncommon for a boat to have a 40 year old inboard that still purrs like a kitten. In fact, it is downright common for that to happen. A good inboard is going to need less maintenance or fewer maintenance cycles, if you will. It'll go further between having issues than its outboard counterpart in most cases. Because of the size and orientation of an inboard engine, it's much more akin to an automotive engine or in most cases, an agricultural designed engine It'll be bigger and capable of a lot more power. And in the case of the agricultural designed ones, it's just made tough as nails and designed to run forever. My Volvo setup, for example, is actually a Perkins diesel. And we know what Perkins are usually used for. These guys know a thing or two about getting a lot of life out of an engine. The weight of an inboard is also much better placed for sailability. They're typically low in the hull and on the center line, which is right where you want the weight in a sailboat. And because the inboard is where it is, the prop is going to be basically at the deepest place on the hull it can be. So in the big choppy seas and the steep rollers, you're not going to get the cavitation. You're not going to lose traction while you're motoring. The inboard is actually out of sight, out of mind. You actually forget it's even there while it's not running. It's not a noisy outboard hanging off the back of the boat. And even when it is running, it's not going to make the cockpit an unfriendly place to be. It's not going to be loud or smelly or anything like that. And the inboard also won't ruin the lines of the boat. Okay, so we like inboards. What's the downside? And oh, the downside of an inboard, the number one downside on my list every time I think about why I hate inboards. It may need fewer maintenance cycles, but most inboards were not designed with what we might call engine accessibility. I've been upside down in so many lockers and bilges so many times and I've called inboard boat designers so many names, more than I can count. Who in their right mind puts an oil filter right here or 
Why is this so hard to get to? They just don't really design the boat around that. In most cases, some newer boats do a better job. They can just be a bear to work on and to maintain and to do anything with because of the limitations of access. In Lady K, the front and sort of front quarters of the diesel are pretty easy to get to under the doghouse, under the companionway steps. The back of the diesel, you have to go empty one of the lazarettes outside, and it's a deep lazarette with a lot of stuff in it. And then you have to go upside down in that lazarette and up into the coffin to get to the transmission and the sail drive and sort of the back of the diesel. It's just a nightmare, and that will always be the number one problem for me. The cost is also going to be a big deal with inboards. Remember I said replacing Lady K's was 12 grand. Overhauls are much more expensive. The parts, the little things, impellers and stuff, those are usually similar costs to the outboards, but a big job can quickly become a second mortgage. If you have to choose between an outboard and an inboard, we're probably talking about a mid-sized boat. And on a mid-sized boat, space is a big factor. That might be your deciding factor on a mid-sized boat. So the engine is a lot to consider. When you have an inboard, it takes up a lot of space. And not just the inboard, you have to also think about the transmission, the cables and linkages that have to run back to the helm. And of course, fuel. An inboard is going to have an inboard fuel tank, which is going to take up a whole extra part of the boat. A big one for me too, as you may know, is I do not like unnecessary holes in the boat. Remember when Lady K tried to sink right here? Yeah. Unnecessary holes in the boat, an inboard is going to have a big hole where it has to get the power to the propeller. So that's one big extra hole that an outboard's not going to have. The inboard also has a cooling system, whether it's closed loop or open loop, it's going to be sucking up seawater to cool itself from yet another hole in the boat. And every hole in the boat is an extra chance for something to go wrong, catastrophically wrong. Okay, so I was trying to come up with six things for each segment, and I've got four things I don't like about inboards, and I'm really struggling to come up with a couple more. I'd really be stretching at this point, so I'm gonna leave it at four. Though I'd be remiss if I didn't talk about two more elephants in the room when it comes to the inboard versus outboard argument, and those are fuel and electricity. An outboard is typically gonna be gasoline. Gasoline is a volatile and extremely dangerous liquid with extremely dangerous fumes. And the worst fear of any boater is a fire on the boat while you're at sea. It's a terrifying concept because there's no fire department to put it out. There's nowhere to go to hide from it. The only thing you can do is try to get it to go out. And if you don't, you're overboard, done. A diesel inboard, however, removes a huge amount of that volatility and stress of having to worry about fires and fumes and things like that. So the diesel kind of wins for me there. On the electricity side, an inboard is far more likely to have a much more robust charging system to dump energy back into your batteries. In my case, it, the Volvo has a 60 amp alternator and that does wonders for the batteries. An outboard may have a stator that produces a whopping 6 amps, 10 times less. Um, it really isn't even comparable when you're talking about the charging circuit between the two engines. So if big battery banks and lots of power are what you're hungry for, the inboard makes sense again. So conclusion, if you're going weekend sailing and you just want to keep it cheap and easy and have a good time, you really can't be in an outboard boat. They're so easy and simple and you know, if something goes wrong, two screws, take it off, put another one on. And they're all over Craigslist, just don't buy a stolen one. But if you're going cruising, doing some serious miles and some serious big seas, you're going to do the ICW or you're going to do the Great Loop. An inboard really is the way to go, and it's probably a diesel. Not that there's anything wrong with the Atomic 4, a wonderful engine. But between the two, it just really isn't even comparable. The inboard means miles and big seas and cruising life and Bahamas and Caribbean, um, where the outboard just sort of makes that a lot more difficult. That's it for this week, guys. I will see you on Friday for, oh wow, episode 125. Bye, guys.